Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this second video in our series Airbus Talks, Julian Maldonado will explain the techniques that they use to design and optimize an aircraft using simulations, wind tunnel testing and flight testing. Enjoy the interview! And also you have the balance between optimizing for normal flight at max 0.8 and takeoff and landing, yeah. which is a completely different okay. domain and different, different yeah. requirements in terms of lift and drag. If you take off, you want as much lift as possible and drag, okay, you, you can manage it. At it's those a very good speech. question, uh, a very good comment. However, uh, how, if you take uh, into account how many, how many times is the aircraft is flying increase? And how many times the aircraft is in takeoff and landing, uh, you, got, you can get the same kind of uh, suspect where we are focused. So 90% of the time the aircraft is increased, so we are focused to on the increased uh, uh, part. That's so why you have the slats focus. and the moving parts on the wings to generate temporarily more lift and then put them back in to reduce drag for cruise flight. Exactly. Okay. And, and as you mentioned, safety is extremely important. It's the main priority, um, which means that you need to test and validate designs up front. And, and there's plenty, tools, plenty of tools available, like wind tunnel testing, CFD simulations, uh, field, well, field um, in, in real life testing. Do you have a short overview on which methods are used where in the process? Yes, for sure. So as you mentioned in, in, in the aerodynamics design, uh, we have three sources maybe. CFT or numerical method or numerical simulation, wind tunnel test, that is uh, testing the aircraft uh, in a small model uh, with uh, simulating uh, the real environment in the, in the wind tunnel facilities and sometimes the flight test. In terms of uh, time, we start to spend more time in numerical method because the wind tunnel tests are quite expensive. So in the uh, wind tunnel test, we need to build a model sometimes is, as I mentioned before, it's a 1.7, 1.11 scale of the real aircraft. is uh, instrumented with the many sensors, so this is quite complex, quite expensive. For sure, what is the benefit of the wind tunnel test? It's the productivity. In one day, we can run a lot of polars or a lot of uh, points of, uh, that we need. However, in the, wind, in the CFD, this is less cost, but we have to do one point per simulation. So we need to, to find out the, the compromise. What is the benefit also with the CFD that we can simulate uh, flight Reynolds number, for example. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the model, we are uh, limited in the wind tunnel test with the Reynolds effect. So we have the chance to test the flight Reynolds effect in one of the facilities in the, in the German. So we can pressurize the, the test chamber we, we, re, we modify the pressure and the temperature to reproduce the condition at uh, flight level. That yeah, this so is you very expensive. Uh, yeah, to change the density uh, to get the right Reynolds number then. Yes, we put uh, a gas with uh, a very low temperature, we increased it, uh, we reduced the, uh, the pressure and we obtain the same flight condition. So th this is very, very expensive. However, give us the chance to correlate sometimes this effect with uh, with the flight Reynolds level. Okay, and is it the sequential story? You spent X number of years in CFD, then X number of years in the wind tunnel, and then X number of years testing uh, real flying, um, or is that not correct? They overlap, obviously, but to what extent do uh, they overlap? We start with the preliminary design, you can say with uh, more CFD and semi-empirical method, the first approach, then we start to refine our data with the more complex CFD simulation, then we pass to the wind tunnel test, and as soon as we get uh, the, the models, uh, maybe we, we fly it in the, in the real aircraft. This is maybe the, the, the general sequence. And do you have a rough idea on the total throughput time of such a product? Imagine you say, we start a new design. Is it, is it two years? Is it 10 years? Is it 15 years? Roughly, without saying things uh, that are confidential? From the scratch to the first flight, it's difficult to say because every, every program is different. And uh, we can maybe we cannot compare the A380 program with the A350 or the A320 Neo with uh, with the A330 Neo. So to give you a roughly idea, is between three and five seven years from the scratch to the first flight. However, this is continued improvement. And, and in terms of standard procedures, I can imagine that the regulators, they prescribe certain tests you need to go through. Yeah. What kind of tests are all involved? Of course, you have efficiency, you have takeoff and landing, but which special maneuvers and so on are required to go through? Uh, for example, reject takeoff, 
uh, that is something that we need to test when you start to, to perform a, a takeoff and suddenly you need to uh, reject to, to take off and to stop the aircraft. The other test is the uh, stall that we identify in which angle of attack the, the, um, the winds lost their the lift. So they start, the pilot they start to increase the angle of attack until they found the, um, the stall. So this is a typical flight test. So we compare the angle that we, they found the stall with our prediction that yep. we obtained in CFD on the wind tunnel. Should be the same. <laughs> so that was it for the second video in our series Airbus Talks. Stay tuned for the next one, because it will be entirely different. Julian will explain how Airbus was involved in the aerodynamic development of race boats in the America's Cup. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, see you soon, bye bye.